Na ni ai katika. Albanj. Can you guys, can you guys, uh, sorry, listen to me. Sinvera. Oh. What? So, where did you guys end last week? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry. Um, we ended on bone superior and bone inferior. That's it. You can hardly get you. Is it, is it okay if you can raise your voice uh, a little higher? We are having trouble getting your voice. No, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Can you get me now? At least. Okay. I say, what about one in two and two in two? What about in two? Yeah. Someone to give, someone to explain. Yeah. You guys are going to be okay. You guys are going to be okay. I think the best thing you can do is lay down the analysis. The copy, then we can show you where we are. No, I know where you guys are in. I want you guys to tell me. I want to see if you guys remember. So I should see what I'm working with. You get me? You know, I'm waiting for the annoyance to answer. So I should just actually. 
it won't make sense for me to bring the thing and for us to proceed. So no one remembers. The person with their mic on, turn the mic off. Okay, according to what I remember, he said that uh, the bone, the bone superior is the minimum number of uh, measure in a in a certain sequence. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else? So apart from bone inferior and bone superior, what else do you guys do? I know you guys look at the numbers. You guys look at the numbers, eh? right? Yes, we did. So what about the numbers? How many the numbers do you guys do? Numbers is very basic, it's very simple. So I think that now I want to ask the children that they want to answer the question. So I'm sorry about the answer. I really don't know if it's just me experiencing this, but uh, I can hardly get you. Yeah. The sound is low and it keeps on breaking. Okay, great. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 So I asked, I said, what about the, uh, what's this here? What about the first part that you guys are doing? What did you guys learn under the real numbers? I'm sure Ennis pointed out that a few things which are important when it, when it comes to real numbers. So what did he say was important? So what do you guys remember under real numbers? And it's a brief summary so I can start because we're running out of time. Because it doesn't make sense for me to go on and to ask to proceed if you guys don't remember like, you know, real numbers. Because real numbers are really important when it comes to, yeah, when it comes to, when it comes to analysis, just think that of the green numbers and complex numbers. So for us to proceed, you have to at least understand because this is the base. This is why I'm asking you guys questions. I'm asking you guys to see how far you've gone. So I should know whether I have to go back and re-explain or whether I should just go forward and just move on. Did you get me? Uh, okay, another thing that uh, we touched was about rational numbers. Uh, rational numbers, we ex we define what a rational number is. Uh, we said that a, a rational number, this is a number that can be expressed as a fraction. We also we also went through the proof of how uh, the root of two can uh, is does not qualify as a rational number. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Heb je ook een conflict aan conflict aan Ja, ik heb een conflict aan Ja, ik heb een conflict aan I can't hear the person who's talking. I don't know what you're saying. Anyway, we're going to go on and start doing something new today. We're going to continue from where you guys ended last week. Sorry, on on the uh, on on Tuesday. Okay, so as you guys, you guys can hear me, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, from what you guys did on, on Tuesday, you guys already looked at, began to look at Majora, Minora, and Bone. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, Bone Superior, Bone Inferior, isn't it? Yes, we did. You guys looked at this part. Eh? We looked at it. Yeah. Okay, you looked at it. Great. Okay, so, what about Majora? Like, what is, because I asked about Bone Inferior and Bone Superior, but I never asked you guys about Majora and Minora. So, what's. What is Majora and what is Minora? I know it can't really be explained, but then just like to give someone to give like an idea of what it is. I'm sure there are some people who have forgotten totally what Majora and Minora is. So you can easily give an example so someone can easily understand. Um, mm -hmm. he said uh, if we have a set, let's uh, which belongs to. Row numbers, let's say a set of one, two, three. A majora is a number uh, which is great or equal to three in that case. So numbers like three, four, and going to infinity, uh, positive infinity, are all majora with that set. Okay, and then minora. Then minora is the opposite of that. That is a number which is smaller. So given that set John is from giving us, that is one, two, three. So one is the minora. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, and then Bone Okay, these things are actually really important when it comes to trying to go about this topic because this topic, real numbers and complex numbers, they're not going to ask you that no make a set of real numbers. We will mention one, two, three, okay. yeah, one, two, three, or whatever it is. No, the questions are going to be based on majora, minora, bone superior, bone inferior. When like. How do you know? Yeah, how do you know is Majora, Minoran, everything else? So if you guys are able to understand this part, this this post more, because these rules here, quite right, they may just seem like now nah, like that's a bunch of notes which are here. But then these same notes which are here are actually very important because you, you apply them. You, you apply them. These are simply like um, properties. You apply them. So what I would advise is that as you are like trying to pay and you are trying to go through, yeah, trying to go through this, uh, this part here where it says um, the real M is a majora, like these things where it says A is for all, uh, yeah, A is a member, like small A is a member of big A, then we can, then we know that A is greater or equal to M. Such in these things, make sure that you write them down, you, you highlight them and you note them down because they're going to use these things to go about questions when you're asked. I'm sure. NS to explain more when it actually gives you examples being the PD which you're going to have later on in the afternoon. Yes, yeah. So make sure you guys note them down and yeah, and you try by all means to see the application. This is why whenever I begin an analysis, 
you can look at the notes. The notes are kind of, the, the notes at times may be difficult to understand, but when you get the TD, it's easy for you to get a TD and you look at the, and the notes, so then from there you're going to be able to apply the notes. Because normally you find the notes are going to be very confusing. Wondering, you know, why is it Majora? Why is it Majora? And why am I even doing it in the first place? But then when you look at it and then you get a TD, you see the application of the notes to the TD. So make sure you always go through the notes as well. Yeah, they're very important. Yeah, this math is different from the math back home where there are no such things as notes. You hear that a lot of notes. A lot of reading, a lot of reading. Yes. Like for those who are going to do things like ENSA and yeah, ENSA, ENSA, what else? Oh gosh. The direct civil engineering and all. Oh, you guys are going to like go deeper. You guys will actually be using these, yeah, be using these things, Majora, Minora, and everything. But when it comes to people who are doing BCG and yeah, BCG, what else? Um, science, you know, yeah, that is what SBT, uh, whatever, all, all those other things, yeah. And agronomy too goes hand in hand with under the category of ENSA and some of those courses. Yeah, you guys go deeper when it comes to analysis. But then, while well, for the other guys, BCG and uh, BCG SBT, it's more of a base. So BCG, you won't actually really do like manual, manual, and all these things. They probably just go straight forward to school, to speak numeric. But you still have to at least understand because all these things do come. Yeah, all these things. Are going to be applied later on, yeah, as you go on with the course. Yeah, so make sure you guys understand because analysis is a build up of a subject, it's a build up. No topic is not important, everything you do is important. Yeah, so make sure you guys are actually going through. Yeah, and if you guys don't understand, you can always just ask. <laughs> yeah, ask to watch videos. If you fail to ask, you watch videos. Yes, so. Today we're going to we'll start from definition one to three. I hope you guys can are all there. Yeah. So we're looking at intervals and segments. What's an interval? What's an interval? I'm sure you all know what an interval is. Yes, he's sharing to me. You're saying? Huh? What's an interval? Hello. Hello. What's an interval? Can you guys hear me? I can give it a try. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, let's say uh, you are given real numbers mm -hmm. and they have specified from, to say, uh, there are numbers which are belonging to a set between uh, two and seven. And that's an interval two to seven. Yeah, so basically, as he has said, an interval is basically a, a group of numbers. Yeah, a group of numbers. Let's say they give, as you say, let's say they give you a set where you've got two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's an interval. Yeah, that's an interval. Basically, a group of numbers. Yeah. So, yeah, in this case here, what if, yeah, in this case here, the first thing is there is having A and B, which are, which are real. And then here we know that, yeah, and then here we know that A is, is greater than equals to B. And then meaning that A and B, I say that together A and B, so A and B can be numbers, it can be anything. It can be numbers, any numbers. And by the way, sorry, analyze, you're going to find a lot of letters. So give you a lot of letters to make plenty. So those letters represent numbers. So in your head, you just, you can put any number, you present the A and the B or whatever it is. Yes. Yeah. So in case you get the one, you know why is there A, why is there B? Those are just, that's, that's there to just to present numbers. In Zambia, they normally use random numbers. Here, they use random letters. Normally, they use A and B. So that's why it's A and B here. Yeah. So, in the just a minute. Yeah. Is it possible that you can share the the PDF so that we can see what you're talking about? Yes, I want to see the PDF. 
No, we can't see. Can you see it now? Tell me, we can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I think you can see it. Take off. Okay, great. Yeah, so I was looking at intervals. I'm already open there. Yeah, so I feel that interval is a, is a set of numbers, a group of numbers. It can be, yeah, it can be two and three, that can be an interval. Yeah, two and three can be an interval. So in this case, you've been given A and B. In this case, you've been given A and B. So basically, A and B are, they can be anything that's, uh, the all is the all under real numbers. Yeah, so, Normally, like when it comes to intervals, you know, you see like how the first one here is closed, the second one here is open, eh? So here, the first one, it says we've got A and B and they're closed, meaning that it's more direct. Okay, meaning, meaning that it's a closed set. Let's say, for example, the interval that's there is between 2 and 7, and then now it's closed, meaning that the interval is from, is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But then, when it's open, like, we, we look at the point, the point 2 there, meaning that from two going, it can be two, one, going all the way, going the other side, these other numbers. Then from seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, whatever, going that side. So you have to really pay attention on the signs you've been given that, that are there. Yeah. Make sure you see, is the interval have the, is the interval open or is it closed? So that you're not meeting up things. Yeah. And then why is it open and why is it closed? Yeah. There. Yes. So whenever I look at intervals, intervals, yeah, whenever I look at intervals, intervals depends on the kind of set you've been given. An open set or a closed set. The first one is an open set, as I have said. Yeah, an open set. So it's a closed set. That's why it's a closed set. Meaning it's a closed interval. Yeah. And when it's a closed set, when it's a closed set, you can also say that A and B is a segment. Yeah. A and B is a segment. But then when it's an open set, like for point two, like an open set. Here, it's an open set here. Yeah, so we can say the interval here is open. Yeah. Yeah, so um, when it comes to other intervals, intervals, intervals differ, differ, sorry. Here, given A and B, they attempt to they have an interval of A to a closed interval. Yeah, you can have a closed interval of A and then A to positive infinity, then, we, then the other, like the other ending is open. So you have an open and a closed, they have an open and a closed interval there. Yeah. So each interval has a definition for it. Yeah. Like for example, like for example, let, let's look at this space point. So this space point here is the closed interval of A and B. And then here is, it's, not, it's not being defined here. It says A, yeah, it's not being defined here. Yeah, I'm trying to have to give you guys the B here. Just like the open interval, which is this one here, which is this one here, has also been defined here. So each interval has a definition to it. Yeah. And it's very important as well to be able to know the definitions and what the definitions mean in this case here. If you, if you guys don't understand, you'll understand better when you're going to give an example. Yes, yeah. But otherwise, yes. Otherwise, these things, I think it can be given one closed one and one open one. It can be given one is maybe like from that infinity to positive a and all that so all in all this part here just letting you know that intervals differ you have an open one and a closed interval at times you can be mixed one second can be open and one second be closed and vice versa and each interval has a meaning each interval has a definition and the definitions are defined by the segments yeah so that's the part of intervals there mm -hmm. yeah and then you should also know that you should also know that under rule numbers, like rule numbers differ. There are general rule numbers, which is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then you've got a rule numbers with a plus sign. Those ones are those ones are from it's a closed set. So it's a closed set, you've got zero to positive infinity. Then the other part the, the other end in there is an open set. So whenever you see yeah. So whenever you see, like, I'm sure you guys know how real numbers, like the, the sign for real numbers, it's a big R. When you see a big R with, with no sign, just alone, 
just know that that interval is an is an open interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. But the moment is you see a plus sign either like at the bottom of that arrow. So that now there is now being specified. It's now being specified. Plus means yeah, yeah. Plus means only positive numbers. That's why it starts from zero going to positive infinity. Mean that because it's only positive numbers, mean that mean that the set they are going to be closed. So then if they close set starting from zero. Yeah. Yeah. Mean they close set starting from zero. Going all the way to positive infinity, there is going to be um, an open set going because you know, positive numbers they go on and go on and go on. So, and then, yeah, and then you now have root numbers with a star, yeah, root numbers with a star and with a plus. Root numbers with a star and with a plus, they that one seems to me, and he say, whenever you see root numbers with a plus, say those are positive numbers, so mean starting from zero. Mean this time going to mean this time zero is going to be included. It's going to be an open set zero called zero to positive infinity. Then you now have root numbers with a bar, like with a bar on top. With a bar on top, <coughs> with, a, with 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 a bar on top, it's more limited that one there. So it's the same thing, just like the general root numbers. Yeah, the general root numbers intervals will really be the same. Now the infinity is to positive infinity, but then this time the set is going to be closed. So the general rule numbers, the set was open. Yeah, I don't think those examples, I don't think those points are actually here. No, they're not here. Yes. But all in all, remember that rule numbers, they are, I'm going to repeat this. Rule numbers. Okay, okay. Yes, so rule numbers, the four types. General rule numbers, the rule numbers with the plus sign in, the only thing is included as there. The real numbers, the plus sign and a, a star. May are going to incorporate the negative numbers as well. No, sorry, positive numbers as well. That's what the numbers as well. So the plus sign there, meaning positive integers only. And then you now have real numbers with the bar. Real numbers with the bar is going to incorporate, it's going to incorporate like negative infinity to positive infinity, but then that set there is closed. It's a closed set. General, general interval of real numbers is an open set. Yes, yeah, I'm going to. This. I don't know. I'll write it down. Yeah, I'll make a PDF for you. Some of you want to see it, right? Yeah. So that's basically on your numbers. So on um, on integers. Yeah, on integers. Integers close and open. That's what's there. You should know why they close, why they open, and why they just need to be closed and to be open. Yes. I don't think everyone understood that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Go on. <coughs> The, uh, on the semi open the interval mm -hmm. uh, uh, is it uh, is it a definition of uh, more than three sets or what no uh, why i'm asking is because uh, at the left hand side we've got a b and again at the other right hand at the other far end of the right hand side we've got a b so i was thinking maybe that's another interval as in of its own set and the other side also an interval of its own set wait sorry which part are you talking about i can't get you well uh after the second uh, point the one that say that on the we need the meme the link yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. now there's now the semi open interval that one there. Mm -hmm. Yes, as in mm -hmm. on the left hand side we have got a comma b, mm -hmm. and at the far right hand side we've got a comma b. So is that like a definition of two different sets? Oh or? yes, yeah, it is by two different sets because two different actually intervals. Because we've got this one here, right? This one here is is closed first, right? Then it's open. This one here. So this one here means and that means this one here means that from a a is a starting point. Let's say a is one, eh? Yeah, let's say A is one. Maybe let's say where there's A here, there's one here, right? Then where there's B here, let's say there's, there's a five here, right? Mean that this set here is going to mean that this set starts from one. It means it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like it goes on because this part here is open. You get me? So the same point here is going to be the A. And then for this one here, means something else. This one here, this part here is open. The open part here represents the, the one, sorry, the A. Let's say, for example, this part, the A here is one, 
then the big head starts. Meaning that this set here will start from whatever number which is this side, be it zero, whatever it is, whatever number from this side, okay? then it's going to end on five. These two sets, they represent two different things, and uh, they're two different, yeah, they, they are two, two different sets. They don't mean the same thing. So I was saying, you have to pay attention to the sign that you've been given, the kind of set. Because here it's closed, here it's open. You can't, these two cannot meet, mean the same thing. Because here, the, the, the closed part here got A, the open part here got B, and this side here is by versa. You've got the A which is the open part here and the B which is the closed part. These two are totally two different sets. Yeah, they represent two different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure when I was talking about the root numbers, the types of root numbers, and all the types of sets of root numbers, you heard me talking about infinity. This is the sign for infinity there. And remember, I gave, I mentioned something like this, eh? Yeah, I mentioned something like this. Uh huh, yeah. So just like here, the turning point here is A, it goes on. Yeah, the turning point here is A, it goes on to whatever number, but then making sure. Making sure that the number here should be positive here, yeah. And then this set here, this set here has not been defined. It's not been defined here. And then we now have another type, just like this one, just like this one here. These are also these are semi semi open sets, yeah. Just like this one here, we have this other one here. But then for this one here, the infinity starts from a negative number, meaning that whatever negative number we don't know what number it is, but then whatever number, as long as as long as it's, it ends on A, like these sets here have a condition. The condition here is, that here, here is that it starts from A, it goes on. This one here starts from wherever, ends on B. This one here, it starts from A, ends wherever. This one here starts from wherever it is and ends on A. So each set here has a condition and each condition should be known. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have examples here. Yeah. Yeah, well examples here I've got one comma two three with pi say say that these are majorals of the segment A, which is shall be this interval here. Then you've got one is a majora of A is equals to where A is equals to zero comma one. An example here. And the inter you have the interval, yeah. So here you've already been told that the interval A to positive infinity is not majora. Then why is it majora? We go back to your notes. What did you say about majora? You see, why is it saying that this is not majora? That's how you work with analyze. Analyze, like in this case here, let's say, let's say here. What? I have a question. Yeah. So. Looking at the where well, you, you are just from explaining. Mm -hmm. So the A B uh, and where we have the A plus the infinitive. So that yeah. A B is a proper explanation is the same as we with the one which has the infinitive. Which one? This one here and this one here? Yeah. Uh-huh. Repeat your question. So that A, B there. Uh-huh. The same as this one, which has A plus infinity V. No, they're different. Is B and infinity the same thing? Not the same thing, they're different. Here, we don't know where it ends. It goes on as long as the number here is positive. This B here is a letter, it can represent a number. Let's say it can represent A. This one here, we don't know whatever number, all you know, that it, all you know that it goes on. It's infinity, it goes on, we don't know. But this one here is more specified because here they put a B. For infinity, it's not infinity, it goes on. Yeah. The point, the, the point here was for you to understand semi-open states and for it also be comfortable when you see infinity and not get scared when you see infinity that's why they had to introduce infinity here but otherwise here let's say here they put one and they put two and here one and they put two and here they put one and they put positive infinity would you say that would you say the two and these are the same no you won't say the same thing and they won't mean the same thing because this 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 two here, let's we're going to suppose that there's a two here. This two that is here 
at least two that is here is more defined. Yeah, it's more defined and like the infinity that it is infinity is not defined because we don't know what number it is. But then when you see like a letter, it's more it's more defined. The person who raised their hand, you can talk. I don't know whether I've answered your question or not. Yeah. Yeah, so on the yeah. Okay. No, huh? no. Can yes. you please re explain on the on that equ equation that has got negative infinity? Can you please this one here? Yes. 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 It's not an equation, it's actually an interval. This one here. Yeah. It's actually an interval here. It's just this part here. So this part, just like this part here. First and foremost, it's a semi-open interval, meaning that it's got two different, yeah, it's defined differently. Like the set is not the same. One side is open, the other side is closed, meaning that each set here, whenever it's semi-open, okay, even just all the other intervals, which are all the other intervals, they all have a condition. And the condition that's here is that it should end on A but it can start from whatever number, which is whatever number, as long as it's negative, because here you've been given negative infinity, yeah. So basically, yeah, so basically, it tells you that whatever number, whatever negative infinity you want, think of whatever number you want, is it will start from that side, as long as it ends on the A, whatever, let's say, for example, this, this A is one. Let's say, let's say this A is one. So we'll say, the, say, the, we'll say the set, maybe it starts from negative 100, all of the numbers from 100 to negative 100 going all the way up to 1 are going to be in this set here. Yeah. Then for this one, the same thing as so. The condition here is that it should start from A. And here we suppose that the A here is 1. Yeah. Sorry. We will pause. We will pause. Not suppose. We pause that the, A here is, that the A here is 1. So we say it starts from 1. That's the condition we've been given. It starts from 1. From one to whatever number, it should just go on and on and on. As long as the number here is positive, the same thing goes about here as well. As long as it is set from whatever number, as long as the number there is negative, but the condition says that it should end on the A. That's why here the set here is closed and the set here is open. It's open meaning that here it's, it's here it's giving you a range. So, so it's giving you an open door, yeah, or an open door. Then for this one here, the open door is more of where it's going to end. So you uh, just have to look at the interval and then look at what we're trying to tell you what's the condition in this interval that i've been given yeah because this in yeah because this interval i'm sure i'm sure when, you, when ns gives you examples when ns gives you examples this interval this interval here can actually be can actually be be defined you can like write not really write it but then you you know you will see when he actually gives you examples yeah, where you'll be able to like go down and like actually see, yeah, you'll be able to like write, like define it well. Yeah, but the essence here is for you guys to understand what the what this what these signs mean. Yeah. Because you're going to apply these signs when you're going to like be looking at the examples you're going to have in during the TV. Yes, yeah, later on in the day. So right now make sure you know what what it means. What what does it mean when it's like this? when it's like this or when they're both closed when they're both open that's the point right now and then this a and this b are just there this a and this b are just there that's examples this a and this b it can be one and two it can be two and three it can be anything yeah then this infinity this one here is infinity we don't know where it ends we don't know where it starts but whatever it is this one is infinity the thing here that at least gives you give it to be more precise is when the sign that's given is positive here and here is negative so that's that on this part here yeah i don't know i, don't know. I hope you guys understand yeah but the lot who are name was doing yeah. this. But a question yes for two questions mm -hmm. so like since you've said that to, we should not define both the closed the closed interval and the open interval so like how how can you define the open interval? The and open then the other question is that 
the other question is that you said some something like the other numbers they should have a bar and then what is the exact bar you're talking about okay no um okay so i'll start from the bar so that time there i was giving you guys ex yeah, i was giving you guys examples not really examples but then like these are pointers when it comes to real numbers like real numbers differ we've got the general rule numbers if you guys know the sign for real numbers it's a big error so when that big error is just a big error you know that it's going to be a set of numbers whatever num whatever an interval it is it will start from negative infinity it will end to positive infinity and that interval is an open interval. We don't know where it starts and where it ends because it's just a general R. Yes. And then I say the second type of real numbers, so a class of real numbers you have is a real number with a plus sign. Meaning that because there's a plus sign there, that's a condition you've been given there. That plus there is a condition. Meaning that the numbers in that interval should be positive. Meaning that there should be a certain point and an ending point there. And when you know that there's a plus there and only one things which are positive, that means that if you, if you start from zero and end to whatever number it is, and we do not end in point, you know, okay, there we put infinity at the yeah, we put infinity. Yeah, so that's for the real numbers with a plus sign. Have the real numbers with a star. That star is the star and the plus sign. That star means that zero should be included. Eh, zero should be included. Then they've also told you that, okay, you should also have a plus sign there at the end. Yeah, plus, it has a plus sign there. Having a plus sign there, you know that, oh, okay. Yeah, we're not, oh, okay. Um, it should go on as long as that interval there has a, the set of that interval, there should be only positive numbers. They have the other one there where there is a bar. It's an R with a line on top, plus bar, a line on top. Yes, yeah. The line on top there, and that's the error. That means that it's still a set. Yeah, it's still a set. The same thing like the general rule numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. But then for this one here, it's a closed set. It's not an open set. It's a closed set. That bar distinguishes from the general rule numbers. That bar will tell you that no, this one here is not precise. It's closed. Meaning that that interval is going to be closed. And I had said that for these things. I'll send them to you guys in the group so you guys can understand what I'm saying exactly. Because it's not here. I said, no, it's not here in this PDF, but those are just pointers that I thought that you guys should know because you guys will like have to eventually have to like apply them. Let's say, let's say in a question, they give you, they say that no, knowing that ARA, they give you ARA plus. Now you're confused. Why the ARA plus? Or you don't know. Yeah, or you don't know why there's ARA plus. That's here. Yeah, you don't know why there's ARA plus. Yeah, and these are small, small details when it comes to questions. And let's say, for example, the R there has the bar. And then maybe you, you think that bar there just means something else, you know? You think, oh, it's just, I don't know, whatever. It's just the, it's just the line, they made a mistake. Yeah, but then again, yeah, these are very small, small details. They give you an R with a star. Why is there a star there? This is why you have to know all these simple rules. So I'll send you these. Yeah, what I'm saying, I'll send them to you. Oh, I think NS actually send them to you during the, the TV. I don't know how as in NS like I, I NS they are you going to send them the the the, the root numbers, um the what do you call it, the classes or I can send them to them. We're going to explain during the TV. NS. Anyway, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's still there, but if it's there and you're going to answer eventually. Yeah. So that's on that part there. <clears throat> that's on that okay, part. I've got I've got a question. You can kind of please square a bit on top. Yeah, right there where it's showing examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is the, the first point it's saying there's one, twenty-three, and five are uh, majora of the segment. What zero and one so in this case the the interval is showing from zero that includes zero and one but how is the majora being 123 as it is stated 
Oh, that's not actually. It's not like one twenty-three. Is that one twenty-three? Is one point? I think it's one point. Is that one point? Uh, okay, yeah. It's just one twenty-three. These are just these are just examples. They're just trying to narrow it down for you to actually understand. Yeah, but I don't know whether this. I don't. I don't, I don't know whether this is one point twenty. One point two three. Or oh, it's one point three. I don't know whether this is one point or just one twenty three pi. I don't know this, so I can't really explain nicely on this one. Maybe I don't know. Oh, what. Okay. Yeah. If, if, even 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 when it's uh, one point two three, here the limit is showing up to one, and this one is showing one point three. It's bigger than. It's greater than one. So no. how is it relating here? Even if here it, it was uh, 1.23, the first is the set here is showing the, the limit is showing from 0 to 1. That is including the 0. Limit and interval. Limits are different. It's an interval. Yes. The mm -hmm. interval is showing from 0 to 1. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So let's say, for example, this. Let's say it's 123 and it's pi. It says these are measurements of, of the segment A. And this A has an interval of 0 and 1, and this set here is closed. Then they went on to say that 1, this one here, is a measurement of A of A, whereby this, whereby, sorry, yeah, of a, whereby the A is equal to and A is equal to an interval of zero and one. Then here they said the it's not become a semi, a semi yeah, it's not become a, a semi a semi interval, yes. Yeah. So the sign here has changed there. Yeah. So basically they are, like here they are show these numbers one twenty three. Okay, let's say one twenty three and five. All these things they have just all these things they have just been chosen here. That's all they have been chosen. Let's random things here. For whatever it is that, that you want to be here, so you can fully understand it. Yeah, let's say for example, if it makes you more comfortable, if you have one, two, and you got three. Yes, yeah. Say, let's say let's say they say one, two, three are measurements of a segment. Let's say the measurements of A. And this A, and in that A, yeah, of that A. Now that same A, where that's the measurement, what that A has an interval of zero to one. And this set here is closed. Then here, the condition here is, it starts from, that me just true. It starts from zero and it ends on one. Yeah, that's the condition. That's the condition. <coughs> that's the condition for these figures here being given. As we said here, we said it be one, two, one, three. Yeah. Sorry, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Of one, two, and three there. Yes. Then now, after this part here has been given here, and then now they now tell you that no one is now a. Yeah, they, tell, they now say one is a measure of a. Yeah, of a. And where we are of a. Then now um, this yeah, this is the one there. Yeah, yeah, this is the one that is here. Yes. Yeah. Then now that means yeah that means that means in this case here. When you've got these numbers here, 1, 23, and pi, the segment here, this is the segment here. So this is the interval being given here. This is the interval here. But then, and this part here is when, when all of them are all measurement, all of them, all of them, this here is your interval here. But then, when it's just one, that's the measurement. It's going to be different here. The set here, so the interval here changes from zero, from open, sorry, from close zero to one, Open zero. So, oh, sorry. Oh, it, oh, it changes to this. So, that shows you that the intervals are going to be different according to whatever it is that's majora or if it's minera. Yeah. So, in this case, here we've got three different things here. And to, and to make it accommodating for all the three, this is a seg so this is the interval for the set A. But then, when you only have one, this becomes the interval. It becomes the interval where only one is a measure. That's what they're trying to say here. Yeah. These here are just examples without like any, like, yeah, just examples. Yeah. 
But I'm sure any will give you guys more will give you guys more examples so that you can understand. So that even when you see yeah, so you can understand like wait, he'll he will give you yeah, he'll give you examples so you can understand. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise this part here is just telling you that one, twenty-three and pi, these are majorans of A. Now this same A has got an interval, is defined by an interval of zero to one, and the set here is closed. Yeah. And then, now, when you only have the one, that's a majora, it tells you that this, that is here a majora of A. But now the interval for the A is going to change. Why? Because only one here should accommodate to the A. But in this case here, you've got three things trying to accommodate to one set, which is A. Meaning that even the intervals are going to be different. Because now here, you have, you have 23. 23 is a large number. And then here, so it has to, I, yeah, here I guess it has to all, be a, it has to be accommodating to all the three. This is why he, this is why you have an interval of this caliber and here is another mm -hmm. interval. Now. Yeah. Hello, excuse me, just a minute. Mm -hmm. Uh Mono, there's someone who is waiting for for him to be added, like to join in the Zoom meeting. Okay. I'm sure that he's added by now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is for this part here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This part here. This is yeah. Examples. Yeah. I'm sure you guys sure understand more when he, when he gives you examples because now here the essence here is what you guys have the best understanding of what's actually going on. And we're behind them. We're so behind guys. We've only done one point, and it's. I have a question. Oh, Sammy had a question. Yes, ask yeah. a question. Um, for the open intervals, is, is it uh, possible for them to have a majora and a minor? Minor. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. It depends on what you've been given. Mm. And I'm sure when you guys look at, let's say for example, your closed interval has had negative numbers, or maybe let's say one is positive, one other one is I don't know. Let's say how many be. Let's say a closed set of let's say you've got um negative seven and you've got and you've got maybe yeah, and you've got five. Then just like they gave you numbers here, here they gave us they gave us one, twenty three, five. And then let's say here you've got negative seven, here you've got maybe let's say you've got two, positive two. So one thing you have to realize is that for you to know if and if for you to know that for you to know if it's majora or minera according to the segment you've been given. Yeah, according to the segment you've been given. So I'm going to ask you. Yes. Uh, on the second part of this um, first example, the, 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 the set is, is more like, uh, after one there is a bar which is uh, indicating but uh, the set is, is going to increase. Now, how come we are picking one to be the major? Since we have uh, the bar, this uh, sign which is showing that it's going to increase, it's an open bar. Which parts are you talking about and where is the one you're talking about? Are you talking um, about this example here? The, the, this other set, uh, the second set, which, which is saying one one a term majora the a egala yeah that one this one, one. yes uh -huh. the bar after after one is uh, is open mm -hmm. which, which means there are also other numbers being included now why are we picking one to be the majora what happens here is that let's say we go to integrity with the majora here, right? Because look, these two here are two different statements. As you, as you can see here, there's a full stop, meaning that this interval here is accommodating to 1, 23, and 5. When you've got 1, 23, and 5, this here is the interval. Now, the other, the other point here I've given you, the other point here I've given you is that when 
we just get one. When, when we just choose one to be the Maldora, this here becomes your, sorry. Yeah, this here now becomes your interval. Because here you only have one number, if they've only given you one. Here you've got three different things. You've got one, twenty three, and you've got five. And this, and, and for them to be all majora, meaning that you have to have an interval that should be accommodating to all the three. And the interval here we're given to so that can accommodate all the three is the zero and the one. And the set here is closed. So I had said that you have to be very attentive to what to the interval you've been given. Because let's say, for example, they change whatever number here, it was negative uh, numbers here. That's the meaning. This interval here is also going to change. So it's like this here and it's like this here because Excuse of what you've been doing. Yes? I'm still waiting for you to let me in. I think they told you I got disconnected due to bad network. Sorry to disturb you. No, 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 don't worry. No, no, like I'm already trying to admit you. I think you're going to join eventually. I've already picked the button. Okay? All right. Yeah. Let's go down there. Yeah. So I hope you've understood that the one here and this interval here accommodates this interval accommodates to the one because only one here is majora. When you got one twenty three pi, the majora change sorry, and then all majora, the interval is going to change, gonna be one it's going to be zero and one. That means Whatever majority you've been given, the interval might differ according to whatever it is you've been given. Like here, in this case here, the interval here differs. Here, yeah, it's different. these two here are different. Why? Because look at here, you've got one, there you've got three different figures, or three different, yeah, figures you've been given. So everything there differs. Yeah, so here, everything, this point, everything here has differed. Yeah. And I said that. And yes, we're going to give you guys more examples, like more examples I guess to work on. Sorry, let me let this guys in. Excuse me. Yes. I've got the question. You are saying that the majora of one, ten three and pi is zero and one, right? Yes? No, 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 no. The only majora is here. In this case, you're only one, twenty three, and five. Zero and one, this zero and this, this one here is an interval. This part here is not the same thing as this. This part here, this part here is an interval. These part here are just, are just things that they give. These are numbers, not five. It was five, also a, five is also a number. Is this, this part here and this part here totally different. Sorry. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So moving on to the next thing. Okay, so guys, we'll be doing this. I'll be answering your questions at the end. Because, yeah, at the end. So make sure that you just try and you, like, try and have, and try and, like, remember your questions. You know, whether, whether you're writing them down, so you ask me at the end. Because um, as much as I would want everyone to understand, and like at the, at, at the same place, so we are moving everyone and understanding. But then the thing is that when I get all your questions, like then and then, I still like right now, I've only done like one small part, and there's still a lot we have to do. Yeah, we're supposed to have finished with this chapter today. Yeah, but it's okay, it's fine. Yes, yeah, I guess have to make time for another class to finish this. Yeah, but all in all, let's just like try and keep our, yeah, let's just try and keep our questions till the end. We see if I have, we see if there's time so I can try and answer your questions at the end of it all. Yeah, so at least we've moved and I can still go back and ask the questions, yeah. And if you see your question, it seems that you are that free. Maybe just try and, you know, and I don't know, get from what I explained to your friend's question. So I will not stuck on, on one small point that they, the, what was it, the whole, the whole hour and everything else. Yes, yeah, so yeah, that's that. Sorry, I have to admit this guy. Oh, goodness. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> yeah, so um, we have moved from, we moved from the value interval and segment. 
So make sure you guys know this because guys, on this part here, you will actually have a question. Yeah. The next part here is now looking at theory. Theory. And this theory has a name. Yeah, this theory has a name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this theory here has a name. And the theories are very important because the theories uh, help you apply whatever it is you've been given. Yeah. So we've got. So that theory, the theory we've been given, this theory that's here, is going to help us further, like, deepen our, sort of deepen our understanding when it comes to this other side here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, before I do that, let's go there. So I'm going to, I'm going to explain it very, very fast. Try by all means to, to get what I'm saying. Yeah. At the end, you yeah, at the end, you have questions, you ask the questions. Yes, yeah. So this first part, I'm going to make this in the Yeah. This first part here is a theory. This theory helps, this theory brings the applicable, what we've done on top here, when we're looking at the intervals and all. For you to understand this, they had to have introduced intervals. For the first time, I'm not bringing these things without you guys understanding intervals. And let's say, for example, this this part here. This I actually no. This part here. Yeah, actually, yeah. This can actually be an interval. Yeah, this is actually an interval. Yeah, except the fact that this x has been defined. You know, x is a member of, of, of q. This part here is sorry. This part here is also an interval here. Yeah. So you see the way x here has been defined. That you say that x is the number of q. So don't be confused. Sorry. Even this this a as well can also be defined. At times you find that they won't just write the a like they won't just write the a and b. They're going to write it the way it was today here. They won't define it. Yeah. So if you know it's defined, don't be confused, they're just letting you know. Remember, they're just letting you know, it can be, they can say X is a member of our real numbers. So meaning that this is very important for you guys to know what these signs mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys know what these signs mean. Yeah, so then it's defined like this. So before someone asks me what why is it like this, it's an interval. It's an interval. The x here has a number. So it's been defined. Yeah. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. Now they're clear. Yes. You know where? Um, so for the theory, it's for the theory. Huh? You can hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. So for this theory, we've been give, we've been told that we've got x and we've got y, and these two, yeah, and these two, x and y, they are real. Yeah, they are real, and they are less than zero. Sorry. Okay. Eh? Yes. Yeah. They're less than zero. Yeah. I'm reading this first. Part. I'm reading this first part here. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are greater than zero. Oh, greater, sorry. Signs greater than zero. Pardon me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Greater than, oh, yes. Yeah. X and Y. <laughs> are greater than zero. In bracket. Which bracket? Propriété. That's me. What the? What does it mean? In the name of the theory. This is the name of the theory. So theory one, two, two. This is the name. Yeah, this is the name of the theory. So this part here, you're going, you guys are going to see as you as you keep on learning, um, you are going to come across different kinds of names. Some properties have got names, like here there's a name. This property here has a name. Yeah. 
So at times, like when they ask you a question, they're going to tell you that according to according to property transition, whatever it is, like here, it's very new. So um, you have to know, okay, what does this property mean? Yeah, you write it down. You see what it means, so that even the, so even when it comes in the question, you know that this is what this is the what I'm talking about, and this property here they're talking about. So make sure that you know the names of the properties. Yeah. Otherwise, this name, this property here right now, this name here, we just trying to, this is this theory here. And yeah, it has the name, just like you for things like trigonometry. You could remember the same thing here. That's the title. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, for this property here, we've been given X and we've given Y. And x and y are greater than zero. Yeah. And then he says that there exists an integer of n. Yeah, integer of n. Yeah, there exists an integer of n. And then it says that um n, n and y are greater than x. Meaning that the n and y, though the n and y never really it's as though n and the y have been multiplied, but all in all, this part here. The n and the y they are greater than the x here. Yeah. But knowing, remembering that x and the y are greater than zero. Now there exists no there exists there's not a part there's not like this this integer here. This yeah, this integer here, this yeah, this integer here makes the y greater than the x. That is what he means. Yeah. So under this property, you've got two things, the two things that you've been given. The first thing you know that you know is you should know is that x and y are greater than zero, that there exists x and this y, and this x and y is greater than zero. But also, but also there also exists an n. And when this n is applied to the x and the y, it makes the y so greater than x. So the property here means, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this whole thing here has been explained here. Same thing. I've just, I'm literally just trying to yeah, explain the same thing. Otherwise, this part here is what he's talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to apply this. I don't know whether this part is going to be applied in one something. Yeah, this is what he's talking about here. So make sure you keep the x and the y, knowing that it's this. And they know that when this is property. There exists, there should be an n, this n here, that makes the y so great than an x. Remember that when it comes to this, so you write it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, this part here, we're now looking at bone, bone superior and bone inferior. Bone superior and bone inferior are just like majora and minera, they're similar. <coughs> yes, just like majora and minera, they're very, very similar. Yeah, they're very, very similar in the sense that they sort of talk about the same thing. They have the same sort of definition. Yes, yeah. And then here, what we've been told, what we've been told is that we've got A. Yeah, we've got A. A part that is, yeah, we've got A. That is not number of zero, but it's real numbers. Or that is more general, that is more general to instead of E. Um, So, sorry, Ruben, what, what's going on? I keep on admitting you. How many times have I had to admit you? Is everything okay? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Huh? I think they're having network issues. Yeah, it's network issues. Yeah. So, um, and I said bone superior and bone inferior. They are similar to Majora and Minera. Yes, yeah. They are similar. And you also have to know this. You also have to like know bone superior and bone inferior as well. Because you're going to like you actually use this even like in the other in the next topic that's coming. Yeah. And bone superior and bone inferior, they are more understood when you put yeah, when you've been given uh like examples. Yeah. But otherwise, right now I want you guys to know. And it's something that's called bone inferior and it's bone superior. And it's very similar to majora and to minera. 
Yeah, very similar. Yes, yeah. Bone superior and majora so are similar. Bone inferior and minera are similar. So guys should keep that and know that they're very similar. Yeah, but then there are times when a particular a particular thing, let's say a particular a particular thing can be born superior and it can be mineral. And the particular thing can be born inferior and it can be majora. So these four things, mineral, majora, born superior, born inferior, these four things they exist and they can yeah, they exist and the time they can like come together and all that where it can be given an interval or like it can be an interval let's say you've been given this thing here let's say this interval here eh? then now get told to define it but it's better to define it if it's majora mineral bone superior or bone inferior and then you are going you have to know is this what i've been given here is this majora or it's mineral the first thing the bone superior is bone inferior second thing yeah so bone superior and bone inferior if you give an example is where you're going to further understand you, you actually you're going to be, if you make your make everything more clear and more easy yeah that's a bone inferior and bone superior i'll take out your any significant examples on this so that you guys can fully understand i feel it's better understood when you can give an example for this part here so this part here we give you examples to so you can understand to five it yeah, but it's more easy, it's more easy to understand when you've been given like um where when you've been given work not like that when you've been given a theory because the theory can be confusing. So this part here give you guys examples that done. This part here will give you guys examples. So here examples which make you guys understand. But just keep these names, keep them. You have examples that will be given to you guys so you can understand. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I've got the question. Yeah. Uh, you're saying that uh, they are alike, as in the four things, the one that you, we are mentioning, the majora. So I said, like, what's alike? Sorry, what's alike is the majora and the bone superior. Those two are alike. What's alike is the uh, mineral and bone inferior. These, like these two together, they are they are like they are not the same, but they are alike. Yes. Uh, exactly. That's what I wanted to ask. I mean, what can tell that this is the majora, this is the bone superior? Is there a way of telling? I'm just from saying that you, if you give you guys examples where you guys are going to know how to tell if it's majora and if it's minera, or if it's bone superior and it's bone inferior. And at times it can be both bone inferior and it can be majora. Or it can be bone, bone, sorry, it can be bone superior and majora, or bone superior and minera, or it can be bone inferior and majora, and bone inferior and minera. So, yeah, you give that example is on that part, you say you can fully understand, yeah, because it's easier understood when you give an example, so you can see, okay, so if this part is like this, this one makes it that, yeah, so that part is going to give you guys examples. In today's to give you the examples on that part to be understand yeah mm -hmm. so we don't waste time on this part here yeah and get people confused i'll just leave it to examples we give you guys examples but i just said just keep the names keep the names and remember okay these things they do exist so even when you see them in the td you don't get scared you don't feel oh my goodness what is this no yeah so there i give you guys examples on that part there yes you can understand Mm -hmm. Then uh, we now have this proposition. It says we consider the part A. So we so we've got A, and this A here has an interval of x squared is less than two. Okay, and then we know that this x is a member of Q, and this Q here represents what integers. So you know what this Q is, but it's been defined there. Here it's been defined here. This here is now your interval. Your interval. Then, then, then when they say that this, then they say that this same set is not bone superior. And I, as I said, he's going to give you, give you guys examples where you're going to know if it's not bone, if it's bone superior or bone inferior. But bone superior is 
very similar to my hero. They're very, very similar, similar. They aren't the same, they're similar. Yeah. With examples, you are going to fully comprehend. Yeah. But this part here, what you guys must check is that an interval can be defined like this. Yeah, it can be defined the way it, the way this part here has been defined. Because this interval here, and like the one we looked at there, where those A and where those B. This part here, sorry, this 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 part here, you've been given yeah, this part here, what makes it different is that this time around here, there is a sign that has been given. First of all, one is a sign here that has been given here. This sign here has been given. The other interval we're looking at, like on top here, there was no sign that was given. It was, it was just like a general range, whatever it is, a general range. The only thing there that was there was a comma. This time here, this time here is a sign. And it's been defined as well. This x here means something because here they can't just let you just propose that no, let's say that this x is what. No, they've given you guys, they've defined what this x means. It's been defined here. So uh, there are times you have to, what you have to define is that. You have to also have to find is that your intervals most of the times are going to be like this. They will not be the way those ones where, where there is A comma B. No, they'll be like this. I'm sure this is what you guys will find in the TD. This is what that's going to be there. And it's from these things here, say you don't now feel not understand. No, because there'll be a, no, no, why is it like this? It's from this part here you'll be able to now develop and now say, okay, how am I going to go about this? If you've been given this here. And now you've been told to solve this. What are you going to do? Yeah. How you, how are you going to solve this? This one here. This one here is more. This one here is more direct. Actually, this one here is more direct. Yeah, it's more direct because we know that to get rid of to get rid of this um this this square root here. What sorry, this square this square. What you you're going to you're going to introduce square root. You square root that. There's square root that. One square root that it becomes x. And this one here it becomes um square root of two. And the square root of two. What is the square root of two? What square root of two? You guys looked at this earlier on. Uh, it's huh? an irrational number. Huh? Square root of two is an irrational number. It's a what? Irrational number. Yes, exactly. And what about rational numbers? Mm hmm. And what about the rational numbers? Are they complex? Do they go hand in hand with complex numbers? Well, that's different. Huh? Anybody? Are they are not complex, they are real. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, this one here, yeah. And then from there, you know, yeah, and then yeah, then from there you now know. Like you're gonna you have to bring it down, you solve it, you write it and all that, you this sign here will change and all that. Otherwise, you guys you see all this in the T D. Yes, but otherwise these are the kind of intervals you're going to be seeing, not the A comma B. So don't be surprised when you find when you don't find anything like what we, what that that example says. Because this is what you're going to be finding in there. In the in the TDs and in your and in your CC, I guess what you're going to have. Yeah, so yeah, you see, you see, you 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 put yeah, you just control, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's start here. So you should know when they give you at times let's say here they give you an R. What does that R mean? Let's say they say R plus. You know, say R plus. R with the back, whatever it is. You should have to really have to know. What these things mean. So I'll send you guys the that other part of the R. I'll send you guys all those things. You can actually like no and all that. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you've been given this as well. Let me see. Just a minute before you proceed. Yes. And then we are on the interval. Yeah, yeah. The, since the square root of two is an irrational number, so is that the reason why the the a is not a bond superior? Yes. Yeah. 
Hello? Did you hear my answer? That's, that's actually a very good question. So. No, I didn't get you. Oh, you didn't get me. Okay. That should be a very, <clears throat> that should be a very good question. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's a very good question. So, you know that whenever I write, like, when you're, so, yeah, when you're solving your intervals and everything else, you're trying to define them. You can't leave an x squared like this. Normally, you have to like leave the x like to be a single x. It to be a single x, yeah. So when you square, yeah. So when you try and simplify this x squared, you come to realize that for, you, for this to be singled out, this part here becomes irrational. And that is, sorry. And that's actually one of the reasons why hey, it actually does not form superior the test. Is why because when you try to simplify, you come to realize that it's one of you come to realize that it becomes irrational. Yeah, which is that bad. Yeah, I think it's not a question actually. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, we have a question. Can you repeat what you just said? Huh? Kindly repeat what you're from saying. Um, what I say is that. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. So what I was saying is that um, when you look at the interval being given, that it says x squared is yeah yeah the interval here that's what's been given here. So normally what happens is that you can't leave something like you can't leave an interval like this because you have to like there's no interval that's like like even when you even like when you draw the x and y plane, there's no x squared in the x and y plane. And let's say for example you have to now define this on a graph. You can't define this on the graph. Why? Because like you need yeah, because you actually need to simplify this because this part here can be simplified. Because on the x and y plane, when you have x and y, there's no x squared plane and y squared plane, no. So what comes about is that, you what comes about is that, um, you have to now simplify this. When you simplify, when you, when you, when you simplify this, one of the ways to simplify this is by getting rid of, the only, the, here, the only way to simplify this is to get rid of this, of, of this square that's here. Yeah, this power that's here. And, how do you simplify this power here? You're going to introduce square root. And when you, you know that the square root cancels the power, and the same thing is what the right should be done, to, what left and right should be done. So you introduce the square root here, even here, you introduce the square root too. So you find that x, so you, so you're going to find that x, yeah, you find that x here, this sign here, yeah, you find, you find that x here, no matter more, this sign here is about to change. So, so, so let's say, for example, it's uh, let's say actually it does change. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm going up. Um. Okay. Yeah. So let's say, for example, this sign here actually does change, it now becomes greater than, yeah, it now becomes greater than A. Normally, like, when you're solving these things, the like, signs change and all those, and all that, A. Or let's say it just stays just like this. We have the X there, it's going to, we just have the same sign, but then here's going to become the square root of 2. So, um, yeah, so, once you simplify this, it also helps you know if something is majora and if it's minora according to whatever it is that you found and according to how you guys have defined majora and minera, that's the case, yeah. And then I say for the bone superior and bone inferior, he'll give you guys like he give you guys questions where I mean examples where he's going to explain properly on bone superior and bone inferior so you get to understand. Because at times when you're looking at these things, theory can actually be a little confusing and we've already run out of time. So I'm just trying to speed up. So he give you guys examples on that part there. So once you see the five, this you see the five here, you come to realize that your the number here becomes irrational here, and when it's irrational, it just tells you that this state can actually become born. It's, it's not it's not born superior or born inferior or whatever. Yes, yeah. 
Mm, otherwise, he'll give you guys examples on the born superior and the born inferior, so you guys can at least can fully understand how to know if someone is born superior or born inferior. But one of the reasons why it's not born superior is actually because when it's, when this interval here is simplified, you come to have an irrational number, which is which is the square root of two. Yeah, and square root of two is not easily divisible and all that. Why it's rational? You guys will do that on Tuesday with any is yeah so that's on this part here on this part here and then now here the extra here the demonstrating um measure so here what we've been given is we've been given this m yeah we've been given this m we say it says m is measure of a yeah of a in q meaning that mean that m is a part of this a and then now this then now this a is found in q meaning that this a is an integer and this a is an integer meaning that we are only yeah, I'm explaining that yeah. Yeah. So and then here we've been given yeah, then here we've been given these two figures. We've been given two and we've been given uh, twelve over seven as well. Yeah. And then here this is like a formula we've been given. Yeah, we've given a formula here. Yeah, we've been given a formula here. Yeah, and then here we go on uh, what have you here we go on this part comes there. So here they have did some they did a few calculations, yeah. They they did a few calculations. You see that in the phenomenon, the square root here and all that there over one there. Yeah, yeah in five there. There, there over one, the two there, all that. So here there's big calculations here. And then um otherwise this part here was just given. This part here was just given here. Otherwise there is a formula, I think. Is that the same formula? Okay, let me just refer to my book of study. No, no, it's not there. No. But otherwise, yes. Yeah, so we've been given this formula here, yeah. And then we know that we know that the m is major, and here we have m prime, yeah. So for us to come, for us to come here, just did some calculations. I'm sure you calculate this. Come back to something like this, where m minus two is equal to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually here the question was actually here the question was for us to show that m m prime is major. Yeah, and then we see that m prime square is yeah m yeah yeah yeah. So we've been given using this using this we're told to show that m prime is major because here we're told that if, if this m here that's major. Now how are you sure that the m prime is not major? We know how to calculate so. We calculated so here we'll give it m prime squared minus three is equals to m squared plus two. Everything was everything is squared over four m squared, yeah, minus two. So once you do the calculations here, you know this part is going to be over one. This one here over one. You do some calculations, and then you actually be given this. You simplify a few things, be given this. So yeah, be given that. Let's go down. This is, uh, we'll be given. Yeah, we'll be given we found, we found this part here. We say that m squared minus two, yeah, m squared minus two is actually going to be equals to m squared minus two. Everything is about to over four m squared because this part here is a whole number. You say over one. You guys know how to simplify this. This thing. You don't have to explain to you guys how to simplify this thing. So this here was simplified. This is now equals to this part here. Yeah. And then now um, we've been given a few rules here. Yeah. Question. Yes. Uh, I want to know the purpose of the prime. And what is squared there? Is it the prime or the m? What, what? The purpose of the prime. And if it is the prime that is squared or m? So the people scale of the prime is just to differentiate that there are two things there, that there is the m and there's the m prime. The m and the m prime are two different things. It's just yeah. The m, yeah. So it just shows that this m and this m prime are two different things. Yeah. And what's squared here is the whole thing. It's the m prime that's squared. It's not the prime that's squared, it's this whole thing here that's squared. Because this m prime is different from this m, so it's just showing you that this 
and this are two different things. That's the purpose of the print. That's there to show you these things here are different. Yeah, in this question here, because if they have gave you M and M, you have been you know, these you have thought that they're the same things. Or maybe here, they, maybe if they put, I don't know, something else, maybe they, they put N or they put R or whatever it is, maybe they put B and O, but this is just to show, show that this M prime and this M are not the same thing. That's the purpose of the prime there. And the squared is actually the whole thing, it's the M prime that is actually squared. Yeah. And remember that as we are calculating, not that as we are calculating, they have been like they have give, they're giving us, they're giving you some rules here. So it says here that we have, it says here, so we had to show that M prim, M prim is measuring, like this here is the purpose, that M prim is measuring. As you are solving, yeah, as you are solving, it's fine, you see if M prim is measuring, because you have to prove that, you know, you, prove, you, know, you have to solve, you have to solve that, to see if M is measuring, M prim is measuring, at the end of the day, you must actually find, I know, according to whatever you see defined at the end, if your M prim is measuring or it's measuring. So all these, so all these things here, just calculations there with a few, yeah, with, with a few notes there, yeah, with a few notes there. It's like as they are, yeah, as they, yeah, as they calculate, they're writing down like a few things there. It says we calculate that, yeah, we calculate that strictly positive, yeah, knowing that M three minus two is not equal to zero, yeah, because yeah, we know that that there, yeah, 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 we do, we do look at the, the the square root of two and all that there. Then now verify that M prime and M, yeah, from there after that, you find your solution, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you calculate, yeah, you find whatever it is you find. Now to verify, yeah, now to verify that M prime is less than, yeah, M prime is less than M. So for you to verify that, you have to now calculate that, yeah, calculate, you now see, calling whatever it is that you find, yeah. And all. Otherwise, calculations you look at them nicely in your in your kid you're going to have later on today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here we've been there. Then not here we've been we've been given this this equation here. It says y is equal to x squared plus two over two x. Yeah. And then we have um yeah, and then now the function of m prime. Sorry. Um. Now the function of m prime and m like has been traced on the graph and the two squared as well, like all these things have been traced on the graph and all here. Yeah. According to what was found, yeah, for the time it's easy to define things using a graph. A graph simplifies things and makes things much much easier. Yeah, you can talk to the one who has that. The other hand is that we can talk. Uh, it's an error. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Just a minute. Yeah. Uh, can you kindly explain how the, the equation, that one for M, how it got to the next stage? Like I didn't get it properly. This part here. Or this part here. Which part are you talking about? This part, this yeah, first part here or this part here? The equation starting from the first, the original equation. What about the good boy? For M. We can't understand it's another thing. But when the question comes, I am black yesterday. What I understood is, oh, sure. Hello? Are you still there? Yeah, just there? there. Just there. Okay, so this was given. This was given, yeah. And then we're told that the M, according to the question, is measure up. This M here, this okay. M and M prime here are different. There, yeah. first and foremost, yeah. Then now, we are now. The person whose mic is on. Yeah. I, I blast a little bit. Sorry, the person whose mic is on. Yeah, so. Can 
you are you saying something? Oh. Yeah, so this was given. Yeah, this was given. We were told that M is Majura according to this question. So according to our notes, we already told that M. Yeah. But the initial thing here we're told to do, what we're told to do is that we're supposed to show that M prime is Majura. And then we're also given that M prime squared is less than two. So better than two. We're told that M. Yeah. We were given, uh, I think we are given this. When we are given this, we did some calculation. Because the, the, the initial thing here is for us to find that M prime is Majoran. When you solve and find, uh, when you solve and you, uh, when you solve, you find that M prime is Majoran. If it's Majoran, then you now have to verify this condition here. Is M prime less than M? When you, for you to verify, you have to calculate. We are given this, we are given this part here. First, calculate and find if m prime is less than m. All in all, this part here, this here, we're given. We're calculating to see if m prime is Majora. Went on. Next thing, on the Majora, m prime had to be verified if it's less than m. Okay, it was calculated. I'm sure you calculate these things in the TD. Yeah. Afterwards, um, afterwards we, we did find that M is Majora. Yeah, is Majora. And it's strictly positive. We found that already according to, according to the calculations. And then we also traced M prime in function of M. It was stressed here on this graph. It was already traced. Here is your M. Here is your M prime. Everything was stressed out. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, even given this equation, even given this equation here, yeah, given this equation here, this equation here was also represented on the graph. Form. Yeah, I'm sure you guys know how to represent um, functions in the graph. Yeah, we do know how to do that. It was represented on the graph. There. Yeah. Yes. So only thing that we're on the graph. Mm -hmm. Then we now have a remark here. This remark you have to note the remark. Make sure you have to note the remark. Make sure you see the remark and you read through it. You can read through it. Yeah. You don't have much time. We have too many things to go over. Yeah. So as I had said, um, our next class, make sure that your questions are asked at the end or we are at the end so that we can proceed. Because we're supposed to finish this topic today because there's so many things to cover in analysis. And that's all little time. Plus, we're doing both the TD and the poor at the same time. So, um, we have to try by all means to, uh, yeah, to move forward and that, yeah, I know that we're always going to have questions we don't understand. And at times it's hard to like move forward when you don't understand one particular part is, yeah. But, I know, okay, yeah, quite the right, yeah, it's better off that, it's better off, you know, and like rushing to finish, yeah. So I'll try by all means to, and to get your questions and make sure that you also understand what has been taught so that you're able to apply it when you're given your TDs to solve during your free time and everything else is, yeah, so, yeah. So for today, that's that. Make sure you guys try and go through what we've done before you guys have a TD. Yeah, before you guys have a TD with NS. Yeah. If you guys have questions, you can try and pose them in the TD. For it to be easy in the TD, where well, this will be able to solve for you. And I don't know how you will solve for you guys. But whatever, you will say, you will do. So, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just make sure you ask your questions, you understand the TV, you read your core as well, so you, yes, you can be able to apply the things that are going to, the things that you're going to, and the things that you've learned in the TV is, yeah. So otherwise, you guys should enjoy the rest of your day. If you guys have questions, maybe, I don't know, you guys, my number is in the group, you always text me, ask me a question, whatever I give, I always be able to answer your questions. I make sure you stay blessed and you take care of yourself. Otherwise, have a great afternoon.
you have a great morning and afternoon. Yeah, so this is the end of today's class. Yeah. There's the hundreds. The hundreds, there's a race.